Hey Siri, when was the first computer invented? The answer I found is 1938. Hey Siri, when was the first smartphone invented? The answer I found is 1992. Hey Siri, when was the first tablet invented? I found this on the web. I think technology has done wonders for us. I mean, just even being here, we wouldn't be able to be here and to do what we need to do without technology. The entire wealth of human knowledge is at your fingertips at a moment's notice at any, at any time during the day. At this point, the question is not, does it have a place in the classroom? It's how do we orient ourselves to make sure we are best utilizing the technology that is already present? When I was younger, like I remember vividly the first time we had internet in our house. I was 13 years old. I vividly remember the first time we had a home computer. Technology in terms of education is a really, truly powerful tool. You know, I remember like as recently as when I was a, like a high school student, technology was so far behind what it is today. I mean, we're talking only like 15 years ago, right? You didn't have the ability to walk around with a supercomputer in your pocket. I mean, cell phones at the time were, you know, flip phones or they were those big bricks. A lot of students that I work with today have, have had technology at a level that I didn't have till I was in college. They've had it their entire lives. So the, the biggest thing that technology has done for education positively, uh, specifically for the student experience, is the interconnectivity and the instantaneous transference of information that now exists that didn't exist uh, as recently as a decade ago. I've been an English teacher for about eight years and I've changed a lot in that time. So when I first started, I didn't really know what to do. I uh, very much like a deer in headlights. And then as I kind of got my feet under me, because I remember my first year when I signed my very first essay, we didn't have computers in the classroom or Chromebooks even then. So I was told we have to go to the computer lab. And when I was in high school, you know, we wrote our papers at home. And so taking a class to the computer lab uh, was awful because they sat in different seats and oh, it was just, yes. Uh, but it was in maybe 2018 or 2017 that we started getting Chromebooks for the classroom, which are you know, like the small laptops. And that really uh, was helpful uh, because then you had more, I had more control over the classroom and the classroom management. I've only been teaching for 15 years, actually 15 years this year, and so I have seen a lot change based on even like what's available. So the stuff that's been available has changed, the interaction, the even like having something like a DEC at the college to help faculty <laughs> even understand something like Canvas or Blackboard or Moodle, whatever their learning system is. I actually see it as a good thing. Whereas, and, and I've seen it as a good thing since early on in teaching, before I even started teaching. More people are steering away from handwritten notes and they're taking notes on their laptops. I even have students who take notes on their smartphones through note-taking um, apps. So see, I see more, more technology and less and less books. <laughs> Technology plays such a huge role in what I do. Every day I come to school, I bring my laptop. It's basically just an extension of my hands at some point. My laptop holds everything that I do for classes. Um, everything that I need for school is in it. Technology in class, I, I like it because if I know the material, if I have a somewhat grasp of it, I don't necessarily have to pay attention that does come with its downsides because I can get distracted very easily. So there's positive sides to it. 
um, but there's also a lot of negatives if you let it. For my laptop, I, I'll take notes on Word or sometimes I'll use my iPad um, and I'll write it because that's the handy feature anymore with iPads is you can write on them with a pencil, so I use that. I became a realtor when I was 18 and part of being a realtor is just the use of technology. You use technology every single day from looking at listings that clients send you to taking pictures for houses that you're listing. I work downtown in Farmville and part of what I do is just spend a good four to five hours every day in front of my computer just for work. I think technology will always have more of an impact on any part of our lives. I think education is definitely one of the um, factors that could come into that. I think that technology will really interpret how we go along with the rest of our lives in general. Being a communication studies major really makes me have a lot of technology usage, like um, for classes, for editing, for photography, for videography. Um, I'm in the studio a couple of times a month, and um, I pretty much I do all of my work on my computer or my iPad, or you know I check my grades on my phone. I kind of um, make sure all the videos look good on the phone, on the tablet, on your um, computer, and things like that that I make. Sure, there's research that notes those, like it becomes distracting and that it very specifically gets into like multitask issues. I see it as a positive thing and no different too much than doodling as long as you're able to focus one way or other. I think using my laptop in any class, not just my communication studies classes, really helps me with doing like my homework, maybe doing some in-class assignments. I think communication studies really um, has a lot of in-class assignments on Canvas or allows you to um, connect with your group through things that you can use on your computer or your laptop or your tablet. Um, and I use my tablet to write down notes, especially in my communication studies classes, just because I have an app on there that allows me to have any amount of pages that I would like and I can just write them down using my stylus. Uh, and I think that it helps me because I'm not typing something. I like to write down things. Uh, and I kind of saw that last semester when I did that, I went through like four to five notebooks um, throughout the semester. And I felt bad about, you know, just wasting all of that paper and resources. So I went ahead and purchased a tablet and now I use this and it's amazing. We don't put enough emphasis on the style or like ways that teachers teach, particularly when it comes to things like technology. Um, we do still have a lot of teachers who are very much, we have to take handwritten notes, we have to use the stack of books. I've recently started using the uh, Lightboard technology to develop some lecture or additional content to provide examples, like written type examples to, uh, for students as a resource. So the Lightboard is uh, primarily geared for faculty. Um, so right now it's uh, primarily aimed at faculty members who are trying to improve the quality of their recorded lectures, uh, primarily for a virtual environment. So usually Canvas is the endpoint um, for students to go back and rewatch classroom content. Uh, what the Lightboard allows instructors to do is to look directly at their audience and directly engage their audience while writing and looking at overlaid graphics without ever needing to kind of break uh, eye contact, without ever needing to kind of um, you know, turn their back to their audience. Whatever traditionally the trade-off was, they can now directly engage in that virtual space. There's a camera with a, a tree of monitors, but essentially it's point and shoot. So uh, you, you point the camera where you're looking to go, in this case behind a clear glass panel. Um, and uh, so the instructor hits record and then can go through using a clicker to advance slide content or any overlaid graphics. Um, and then beyond that, uh, it's just making adjustments in situations. So they can look at the confidence monitor and adjust themselves in frame um, to you know, kind of uh, adapt how they're delivering uh, that video content if necessary. I, I think at this point, students especially have a, an expectation of continuing the classroom experience beyond just the live in-person session that they had in class. There's an expectation of being able to go back and re-watch classroom experiences or, or, or deepen their understanding of learning um, on their own time. 
Um, and uh, I think this technology allows faculty to allow students to, to, to build that understanding on their own, even independent of the instructor. So the instructor can create video content for students to engage in on their own, and they build their own learning uh, as a result. Technology is an incredibly powerful tool. As technology continues to develop, it's only going to become more powerful. Its possibilities are only going to become more limitless, right? We're gonna to continue to expand. An incredibly powerful tool. The challenge for educators, for students, for the, the whole symbiotic relationship there, the challenge is learning how to, is continuing to evolve our understanding of how we wield that tool. I think going forward, what we'll see is just that technology is education. It's just going to be a part of it forever from now on. I don't think we'll ever go back to a time where we just don't have technology in school and in education. I think technology's impact on education uh, is, is incredible, and I think it's here to stay. I don't think we're gonna go back to a, I, I, don't, I don't think we're gonna see it go away anytime soon.